Hey Subfuries, welcome back to part 5 of our Elder Scrolls lore series, where I take you through the history and mysteries of the land of Tamriel. We've already talked about how Tamriel was created, the wars of the Elnafe that followed, the splintering of Old Mary society and the rise of the Kaima, and finally, we come to an event intrinsically connected to that. The beginning of the Orc race and the transformation of the Adric god Trinimac into Malakath. How exactly did his transformation go down? What role did the Daedric Prince Boethia play? Well, this is the story of the Orsma. The origin of the Orcs is intrinsically connected to the Velothi Dissident movement that we talked about last video. You can click the link in the corner of the screen to watch that. We've already spoken about the part of the Kaima, the ancestors of the Dark Elves, and what they did in this story. And today we'll be talking about the transformation of Trinimac and how his followers became the Orcs. Different sources place this event during the Marethic Era and the Dawn Era, but either way, it was one of the first events in memorable elven history. Let's set the scene. To the Oldmer at the height of their society, they were the first sophisticated, literate, and technologically advanced peoples in Tamriel, and Trinimac was a huge part of their society. At the time, they worshipped the ancestors of their bedders. Auriel, Trinimac, Cerebane, and Finasta are among the many ancient ancestor spirits who became gods. Trinimac was so important because he was Auriel's champion, and the strongest of the ancient Altmeri ancestor spirits. He was, in some places, more popular than Auriel. He was the warrior spirit of the original Elvish tribes. So he was the militaristic arm of the original elvish pantheon, with an emphasis on honour, war, celebration and family. We know this is true because it comes from both elvish and human sources, so it's probably not bias. Trinimac's importance arose probably from the fact that the Aldmer believed he was the one that fought against Lorcan to protect the Aldmer from the hordes of men during the Dawn Era, and that eventually, he was the one that knocked Lorcan down in front of his army, and reached in with more than hands to take his heart. Lorcan was undone. Trinimac was the god hero to the Aldmer, and he had a huge number of devout followers in Eleanor. But the story of the Orcs really begins when he and his followers came into conflict with the prophet Veloth. Veloth saw the Somerset Isles as a society founded on ambition, greed, and decadence. He dared to cast off the decadent chains of Old Mary society. But Trinimac and his followers believed that Boethia, a Daedric lord, was speaking to Veloth in dreams and visions, guiding him to lead a new sect of Old Mary with the belief that mortals could ascend to become gods. Trinimac's priests condemned the new sect for blasphemy and threatened exile should they not abandon Veloth. They saw Veloth as dishonouring their ancestors, who had protected them, guided them, and helped create the world and them. He was threatening to splinter the greatest society of their day. People had their place, and Veloth was disregarding that. Determined to keep Aldmer society intact, most sources, Orc, Dunmeri, and High Elf, agree there was a battle of some kind. Trinimac protected them against enemies without and within. He and his followers attempted to halt the Velothi dissident movement. It culminated in a brutal confrontation between Boethia and Trinimac. Robomac Gro Abermath, an orc historian, also records that a battle took place, and as an orc I'm sure definitely would like to think that. This would also make sense given that Trinimac was, of course, a warrior god. But it's the fallout of this bloody confrontation that we are concerned with. Most importantly, that sources universally confirm that the Orcs were born following the famous battle between Trinimac and Boethia at the time of Redstain. More detail on that soon, though. How this battle went down, however, is up for debate. The Dark Elf and human sources tend to portray the battle between the two as more one-sided, with Boethia, a Daedra, relatively easily beating down Trinimac before eating or consuming him. They tend to focus on how Boethia ate Trinimac and voided him, or that the elven god Trinimac was eaten by Boethia. It is generally true that Daedra are stronger than the Aedra, but the Orcs tend to tell a different story about what happened. 
Rubbermac Grow Abermath holds that Trinamac was about to strike a mighty blow when Mafala appeared and stabbed him in the back. As Trinamac kneeled, wounded by Mafala's treachery, Boethia gloated and cast a terrible ritual to scar and twist his appearance, then cast him to a place of choking air and ash. The orcs never forgot this day. Rubbermac's story brings up two things. One, that Trinamac was actually winning before he was betrayed and literally stabbed in the back, and two, that Mafala was involved. I don't have much trouble believing that Trinamac put up a fight, but given that the vast majority of sources don't mention Trinamac being about to defeat Boethia at all, I doubt this part is true. In fact, not even High Elf sources, like the Fall of Trinamac, which are biased towards him, mention it. When the priests were about to pass judgement, Boethi appeared, having swallowed Trinamac. They too show it was more of a one-sided battle. This really seems like historical bias on part of the orcs, who do have an oral tradition of history. They also place a lot of emphasis on honour in battle and facing your enemy and strength, so that probably didn't happen. It's more likely that Boethia just surprised or directly overpowered Trinamac. The second point he makes though, that Mafala was involved, is possibly true. A Dark Elf book does mention Mafala and Boethia at this battle. Boethia told the mass before him the triangle truth. He showed him with Mafala the rules of the Sigic Endeavour. This isn't proof, but it does make it possible, and she is the Daedric Prince of Assassination, so acting like this wouldn't be unexpected. So what do we know about this confrontation between Boethia and Trinamac? 1. Boethia easily defeated Trinamac. 2. Boethia consumed him. And 3. It's possible Mafala played a role in his defeat. There are different accounts of what happened after Trinamac was consumed by Boethia, but some sources say that Boethia took on Trinamac's shape and form and revealed the lies of Trinamac's teachings with Trinamac's own voice. He was content the priests were shamed and broken from his revelation. Here he was talking about Lorcan and the Aedra. Whether or not Trinamac was lying about Lorcan isn't clear. There are good reasons to believe both sides, but either way, some truth came out to Trinamac's followers, and Boethia relieved himself of Trinamac in front of the assembly to complete his shame. It's quite likely that Trinamac's cult was simply broken to see their god hero so shamed and defeated, and it is in this moment that the orcs were born. To understand the transformation of the Orcs, we must understand the transformation of Trinamac. Brother Mikhail Kakuksor writes that when Trinamac was excreted from Boethia, he was transformed into Malakath, and all his followers into Orcs. But what exactly happened here is unclear. The true nature of Orcs states Trinamac's body and spirit were corrupted, and he emerged as Malakath. His followers were likewise changed for the worse. Rabbimak alludes that this transformation involved a curse or a ritual of some kind, while Thindaramir Death Blossom said that the transformation was meant to show Trinamac and his followers what they truly are. Brutish Betmer without guile or finesse. He was no longer the Aedra of honour, family, wars and celebration, but the Daedrith Prince Malakath, whose sphere is the patronage of the spurned and ostracised, the sworn oath and the bloody curse, to reflect just what had happened to him. Another source says that it was the torture and dishonour that left Trinamac twisted and enraged. There's also some people who refer to what happened to Trinamac as a resurrection or a reanimation. While the common theme is that Boethia literally ate and excreted Trinamac, Malakath himself has said that this is a bit too literally minded, so think of it as more of a metaphor, but still true, it probably involved a bit of everything we've talked about, a curse, ritual, eating, resurrecting, reanimating, excreting and transforming. I don't have time to go more complex than this. Does Malakath have something of a dual personality, like Sheargrath does with Jigalag? Is Malakath a Daedra or an Aedra? 
There are theories either way and there are too many mysteries for me to get into in this video alone. What we know for sure is that Trinimax followers were transformed into orcs at roughly the same time Trinimac was, but it's also implied that it was a choice for his followers, or that at least not all of his followers became orcs, that only the most devout did. In the Anticipations, a Dunmary source, it writes, The followers of Boethia and Trinimac rubbed the soil of Trinimac upon themselves and changed their skins, implying they literally covered themselves in his crap and caused the transformation, but okay. The Fall of Trinimac also writes, His most devout followers changed to match him and became the Ozma, cursed to wander in exile, a people without a place. So, it's quite likely that only a portion of his overall followers became orcs, or that they had to choose to become orcs. And this is pretty important, because a lot of people, including the orcs themselves, tend to believe that the orcs were cursed to be like that, but the evidence tends to show us that they chose it at the time, for whatever reason, perhaps they felt dishonored and they were making up for that. There are some who believe that Trinimac tricked Boethia into thinking she had consumed him, and that he in fact absorbed some of Boethia's strength and passed it on to his followers. In this way, the Ozma can be seen as improved elves, but as said before, Malakath himself has confirmed the transformation story, so this really doesn't hold much weight. Ugly, fallen, and twisted, the newborn followers of Malakath fled and found a new home on Tamriel, where they developed their own culture, language, and place to thrive, Iliac Bay, where they have been happily terrorizing villages and fighting one another for hundreds of years. Their history is a long one of fighting for their place in the world, the building and rebuilding of Orsinium, and struggling against the powers around them. But all of that is a story for another time. I hope you enjoyed this sub series. If there are other Elder Scrolls events you would like me to do videos on, then tell me down below in the comments. Also, I do have a question for you. I've been considering whether or not I should move my Elder Scrolls content to a second channel that is purely dedicated to Elder Scrolls lore, and I really want to hear what you think of that. Do you think that would be better for uh, my Elder Scrolls content and my channel in general? Let me know down in the comments below. In the meantime, I'd love for you to join other sub series follow me on Twitter, Wattpad, Facebook, email me or send me stuff that you've made at the address and links in the description below. I love making this content even though it is somewhat my uh, less watched stuff. That's okay. I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, and stay nerdy, sub -furies. I'll see you in the future.